guys, what's going on? We're back to another vlog. And today we're going to do the air for the air show. So I'm going to take it on with me. Hope you enjoy it. Let's go. Through the sky. 
Zweifel wäre schon nicht im Boden getroffen. Indeed it is, by turning a lot of fossil fuels into noise. Typhoon is consuming six kilograms of fuel every second, and due to the spray Carbon composites, plastic and titanium alloys, not like any other plane. a certain well-known airline that shall remain nameless. Uh, I think it's called British Airways. Anyway, there we go. I'll collect my fee later. And you can see they've really got very effective uh, smoke. Uh, this is a new kind of smoke that some of us have been trying to get hold of these days. It's very, very difficult to get hold of. It's very expensive. Uh, black smoke, uh, because of the essential element they use it, which is anthracite. This black smoke, and it really does work well. Wonderful tight formation. Having done one of those tumbling maneuvers, but all initiated with the rudder and forward stick. Again, the pulse, top of a loop. There's a necktie, another negative snap roll, left rudder, hard forward stick, full throttle, and the aircraft starts to rotate end over end once again. Extra 330SC, sponsored by Sealy Tools. And I'm told that you get just about any tool you want anywhere in the world. And look at that tumbling again. Absolutely amazing. Mark flies all over the world. He leads what's known as the Global Stars. They fly in India, the Middle East, China, Australia. A great team. And as you can see, this aircraft, tremendous uh, maneuverability. Photo opportunity for you aficionados. On the left there, the P-51D. Uh, Mustang, Miss Helen, the wonderful B-25 Mitchell, and the amazing Coin the aircraft, as is known, the very characteristic top tail twin engine turboprop, the Bronco. And that has a total of 40,000 pounds of thrust. But you look at the speed and penetration of these little aircraft, and indeed you compare it to the Typhoon. Mm. Here they come. Lovely sound. Very characteristic twin boom cross tail, T tail there. They've performed all sorts of roles. This is Plain Sailing's Catalina. Look at the wonderful high wing, two radial engines again. And note particularly the observer's dome on the right hand side where they can look outside all the way down the front and rear of the aircraft. Got to unload it when you pull the stick back, otherwise you just bury yourself on the back of the drag curve. Climbing 45 again, one and a half turn snap roll, turning to the right. And you can see the characteristic pits, red color scheme with a sunburst on the top wing. So this is, this is a factory aircraft, it's not an S1E, it's an S1S. Four point hesitation roll, first floor, yeah, first flew, 1944. As I say, designed by Curtis Pitts, Par Pitts.
away for a full show. Red One has started with a flat display. He enters a right-hand turn. You can hear him on the radio there. He calls the pilots into short diamond formation. Now the jets move to be around six feet apart as they're in the right-hand turn forming our trademark Diamond 9 shape. Leading the team is Red One squadron leader David Montenegro. It's his second year as the team's leader. He first joined the team in 2009 and left in 2011, rejoining last year to lead the team. And he's got his family here today. So here's mum and dad, who are Mary and Angus from Wigtown in Dumfries and Galloway, come to watch Monty leading the team. So now coming in from the right, the smoke is on in short diamond. Keep your eyes on the four and five on the outside. Reds four and five there, pitch up to roll back rapidly into the next shape. Now sitting on Reds eight and nine's wing as their smoke goes off, moving from right to left. On the leader's right wing is the first of our two new pilots this year. He is Red two, flight lieutenant Matt Masters. Matt started his career as an instructor teaching on the Tucano aircraft, teaching basic fast jet training. He then flew the Tornado F3 as an air defender before then moving on to fly with number 100 squadron, which is the Royal Air Force's aggressor unit, which provides target aircraft for frontline training. Front left now, the smoke is on as we form a shape that was given its name back in the 1960s when NASA's Apollo program was in full swing. We've put it in the display this year to celebrate the achievements of Major Tim Peake and his journey aboard the International Space Station. So now coming in from the left, celebrating Major Tim and Britain's latest involvement in the space program, this is Apollo. <laughs> Apollo there, designed to look like the lunar landing craft from the Apollo missions. There you hear Reds 2 and 3 acknowledge the next move, and they do so with a very set cadence in their voices. The idea is the pilots continue counting in their heads using that cadence. On the count of four, they extend their air brakes. On the count of six, they retract their air brakes, which means they drop back at the right rate to form this shape, which depicts the delta wing platform of the fabulous multi-role combat aircraft that you saw display earlier, the Eurofighter Typhoon. So now red and white smoke's about to come on. Oh yeah. This is Typhoon! Well, the other of our new pilots this year used to fly the Typhoon. He is Red 3, Flight Lieutenant Cy Taylor, and he's at the front of the left-hand wing of the Typhoon shape. Cy started off as a Tornado GR4 pilot. But then he moved across to fly the Typhoon, first on the front line with number 3 squadron, and then he became an instructor on number 29 squadron, the operational conversion unit from which you saw the Typhoon display earlier on. To the right now, you'll see another shape is formed as we get ready for a brand new manoeuvre this year, which celebrates the Royal Air Force's fast jet workhorse. Since 1991 and the start of the first Gulf War, the Royal Air Force's Tornado Bomber Force has now been on continuous operations for 25 years. So now in from the right, celebrating the Royal Air Force's Tornado Bomber Force. This is Tornado! Six of the nine pilots you're watching display right now are in fact former Tornado Bomber pilots. One of them is Red 5, who's at the front left of the seven arrow shape leading Tornado. Red 5 is Flight Lieutenant Emmett Cox. He's in his second year with the team and he's actually from New Zealand. But he moved to the UK in 2002 to join the Royal Air Force and became a Tornado pilot and then an instructor on the Tucano. Looking left to the front now, you'll see another shape is formed. The three aircraft on each wing dropping to the back of the formation. When the wingmen are on Red 1's wing, they get a very good view of his jet, from which each pilot takes his references. They don't look at the aircraft only six feet away. 
Everyone uses Red One's jet for the references. They just trust their wingman next to them. Only six feet away will be in the right place. In this shape, they're around 120 feet back from Red One, but still looking only at his aircraft. So it's a very difficult shape to fly. This is Swan. Swan is Red 9. He's Flight Lieutenant Joe Hurston and Joe is in his third and final year as a Red Arrows pilot. He started his career instructing on this version of Hawk. He then flew the Tornado then went to the new version of Hawk, the Royal Air Force's newest advanced jet trainer, the Hawk T Mark II. Well this is Joe's last time displaying in Scotland and he'd like to say a big hello to his mum and dad Ginny and Alistair, his sister Beth, his brother-in-law Sam and his niece Izzy who are watching here today. And that's Joe at the top of the formation to the right as they set up a shape reminiscent of the 1960s Royal Naval Fighter, the de Havilland Sea Vixen. We've now gone to the rolling display having started flat. Coming in in Big Vixen, they're going to fly the Big Vixen Roll. What are you laughing at? He's... Upside down now, the pilot's canopies are coming towards you. They'll see you waving, everybody. Let's give the pilots a big wave. 400 miles an hour, 2,500 feet above us in that fabulous Big Vixen shape. And on the right of Big Vixen is Red 8, Flight Lieutenant Stu Campbell. Stu's in his third and final year in the team. He's a former Tucano instructor and flew the tornado with number 617, the Dambusters Squadron. Again, it's Stu's last time displaying in Scotland. He's from Scotland also. He'd like to say hello to his wife, Claire, his friends, Dom and Ali from Glasgow, his brother and sister-in-law, Tom and Susie, and his nieces, Ailey, Martha, and Sylvie. A big hello to all you guys watching today. Well, that is the end of the first part of the Red Arrows display. Have we enjoyed it so far? Jubbly, <laughs> jubbly. Well, now it's about to get even better as we start the second part. This is the detonator. I like the blue. There you go, Enid. Keep your eyes on Chippo. <laughs> With their coloured smoke changing to white on the left and right are Red 6 and 7, who together make up the synchro pair. Red 6 fly on our left and Red 7 on our right. They're performing derry patterns, rolling the wrong way to now come back towards the seafront. Flying now at 1,200 feet with the smoke on at full power, max performing back towards us. They now start descending to just 100 feet above the sea. Their closing speed is coming up to 770 miles per hour. Left and right for the synchro pair and their first opposition pass maneuver. These are the opposition barrel rolls. Tan says Red 6, they keep full power on the jets with white smoke, now turning away from us, pulling 6G, or six times the force of gravity. Everything in these pilots' bodies now weighs six times more than normal. So the pilots have been working hard. The blood wants to pool in their feet. The G-suits are inflating around their legs, fighting the G-force. They'll fly the Cyclone. Pitching up to the left-hand side with a puff of white smoke is Red Six. He is the leader of the synchro pair. Flight Lieutenant Steve Morris. Steve is in his fourth and final year as a Red Arrows pilot. He started his career instructing on the Hawk. He then became a Harrier GR9 pilot before moving to the Tornado GR4. And that's him on the left, descending now on high, chasing him down underneath, cutting the corner at full power, is his wingman Red Seven. Looking right, 45 degrees, seven headlights, reds one to five, eight and nine, white smoke on, dropping down to form an inverted V-shape, getting ready for a very patriotic manoeuvre. Cameras ready for the goose. Up they go, red one. 
white and blue. Fabulous dark backdrop showing off that brilliant deep coloured smoke there as Enid with reds eight and nine into a right hand turn. The reflection over to the right of that brilliant red, white and blue stripe as Enid climb off to our front left. Now look to the right hand side to find the synchro pair. Look at the sea. See them just above the Keep your eyes to the right for the shotgun. Red 6 there giving the commands for here and Red 7 to roll inverted and upright at different stages during that brilliant shotgun manoeuvre. Keep your eyes down to the left hand side to the south you will find Reds 1 to 5 joined by Red 8 with some more red, white and blue. They roll out down the line with the white smoke about to come on. Eyes left for the revolution. Straight ahead now, you will find red six, seven, and nine rolling out directly towards you. Red seven and nine with their coloured smoke rolling around red six. Camera's ready. This is the Vortex. Left and right, the synchro pair are now performing more derry turns to come back towards us for the next manoeuvre, which this year we have changed the name in honour of an aviation legend. Captain Eric Winkle Brown was a Royal Naval test pilot and fighter pilot during the Second World War. He sadly passed away in February this year, left behind a world record for the most types of aircraft flown, 487 different types of aircraft. He was known as Winkle as he was a short chap. As I say, he passed away in February this year, so in honour of the aviation legend that was Winkle Brown, this year we're calling these the Winkle Rolls. is on. Reds 1, 2, 3 and 5 form a box formation. So coming in over the Troon area, the fifth jet is now going to roll around them a dozen times. This is the Twister. Tornado GR4 on the front line before joining the team. And there he is, finishing his 12th roll around Enid. White smoke coming on. Look left now. Here come Chippo. Go, Chippo. Go, Go. <laughs> now, red six and seven roll upside down in close formation. Eight and nine are matching them directly underneath as they come in in mirror. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. <laughs> They're over there, Nick. Diane! 
Red Six, they're given a command to finish mirror by rolling out to your right in a double line astern. But now you need to look to your left. Here come Enid. The white smoke comes on, five headlights coming towards us. Can't see them, there they are. Get in. The inside pilots pitch to the outside as they fly the rollbacks. Rollbacks to the right. Keep your eyes in that direction for the four jets of Jippo. Go, Jippo. Go, we are Once again, synchro roll inverted. Red and blue comes on. This is the corkscrew. favourites there, the corkscrew finishing to the left as they roll up into escort formation. Now look right, 45 degrees for Enid. Enid, line astern go, says Red 1. The smoke comes on, they drop down to be stacked top to bottom, Reds 1 through 5. Coming right now, the following pilots use a lot of red smoke. A lot of runner now to swing the jets out like a pendulum. This is line astern. Well, normally we fly our formations with the odd numbered pilots on the left and the even numbered pilots fly on the right. But in this shape, it's the other way around. Reds two and four are on the left and reds three and five are on the right. They want to switch to their normal size, so they do it like this. This is the slalom. So they're back on their normal sides now. is that you need a higher power setting to maintain speed. That higher power setting means you have a hotter engine. It gives us a much deeper colour in our red and blue smoke. And then four and five before we roll back, finishing the Cobra. And now you need to look to your left and right for the synchro pair and their final manoeuvre. This time, red six from the right and red seven from the left. They're closing at 800 miles an hour. They're going to cross three times in opposing 360 degree, six G turns in the carousel. <laughs> Remember they are pulling six G, working hard to fight the G force as they fly this maneuver. They're going to cross three times and at each cross, the smoke colour will change at the back now from red to blue and vice versa. Around the front, they will switch back to white smoke and now air. Please put your hands together for the Synchro Pair! Now looking straight ahead, we're flying around at 600 miles an hour. Red 9 is joining Enid and Red 8 for the displays finale in a seven ship Vixen formation. This is... The Vixen Break. You've been watching the Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team, the Red Arrows! Yay!